Hey guys, Thunder E here, and I've got a very interesting video for you. Today, we're gonna to take a look at two of the top end TVs on the market uh, between the LG E9 OLED and Samsung's Q900R 8K TV to find out which is better or which gives you the best bang for your buck. And of course, that price range. So let's jump in. So when it comes to buying televisions, uh, the top tier TVs in the market usually are priced at around $3,000 nowadays. So we have the E9 OLED, which is one of the top end uh, OLEDs from LG. Uh, this thing, of course, has beautiful contrast in blacks uh, and also boasts uh, uh, improved game mode. Uh, which has an NVIDIA uh, G-Sync now uh, through an update if you've already bought this TV. Now, there are a lot of cool features to this TV. One of the things I will mention is the fact that it does have a really good sound system. Uh, it's got a soundbar built into it, uh, and it's about uh, 60 watts in terms of output power and does a really good job. Now, the other things to mention with this TV, of course, is its setup process. I could show you, but it was a pain and I'll put it that way. You have to set it up with the box. It's not an easy process and something that will take some time. So I kind of ding it a little bit there because it's not an easy and intuitive process. It does take some steps and I think a lot of users will not be uh, interested in that. There's also no separate box, everything is there, but what you do have here is something that's really thin in design. Of course, that paper thin or that credit card thinness that uh, LG has pushed with the OLEDs is something you see with this, and it's very nice to see and look at, and I think a lot of people would like that with you know a device like this. It does come with the Magic Remote, and what you have here is a remote control that has uh, basically a one-like me mechanism built in, I don't like that anymore. This is the time I used to like it, so if you see it in my old videos, I'll probably praise it a little bit. But now it feels gimmicky and it actually interferes with the OS. This is running WebOS, and uh, the WebOS is very really good and functional on the LG TVs. What you have here is something that I think hasn't been updated as much, but it does give you a lot of features, mind you. So. Don't, don't take me wrong here. Uh, you do have the ability, of course, to download the applications. There is a built-in uh, TV tuner, giving you different stations and HD applications over the air, which is nice. Uh, and you also have the ability to go ahead and connect to your smart home products as well. So all that is baked in. Now, before we get to picture, let's talk about the Samsung Q900R. Now, this is Samsung's flagship, it's about 3,000, maybe 3,500. Uh, pricing for both TVs will be on screen for you, so don't worry. But this is a TV that is an 8K television. Now you're saying, wait, wait, we don't have 8K source material. That is very true. What the TV does, it upscales anything you watch, any input that comes in to 8K. Now, some people have gone out and said, yes, this is not true 8K. Yes, it doesn't do that properly. Well, I disagree. One of the big benefits of this TV is watching older content. And the real reason why 8K is important is as we get to bigger sizes, uh, I would say 65 is the cutting it close, but 75 and up, that's where you need 8K resolution because you, as you go bigger, you've got you know more pixels, there's a lot of space, it starts, your content, 1080p content, 720p content, starts looking fuzzier at that range. Now, I was able to go ahead and watch Star Trek Next Generation, which is on Netflix, it's 720p, and it was a marvel watching it upscale to a higher resolution and seeing it at just better context. It's really nice. Now, if you go, walk up really close to the TV, you will notice that, yeah, okay, um, it is upscaling, but sitting back normal distance, it, it really does a good job. So what's interesting about this TV is that, yes, it doesn't have the same high contrast as you find with the OLED, but it does a really good job, especially with the multiple dimming zones here you have here. Now, in terms of speakers, it's not as powerful or as loud as the OLED speakers, but the setup process is really easy. Uh, it's a very simple process, something you can do on your own, especially the 65 inch, because the uh, stands are placed behind the TV, something you pop up, connect, and you're good to go. I actually have a setup video on that, so go ahead and check that out. See, there's a reason why I didn't show the LG because it just wasn't as easy. Now, this TV is thick. It's not a slim 
uh, as the OLED, but it is a nice looking TV set. Thinner bezels for something like this, but it's still a uh, thick TV. Now, in terms of functionality, you do have, of course, Tizen, and I think Samsung has the best operating system for TVs on the market. Nothing comes close. I think maybe LG is the closest, but the Magic Remote really puts something that makes it a little clumsy. You do have the ability to download the applications. You can go ahead and also use uh, voice recognition with Bigsby and now Google Assistant. So as you can do with LG, with uh, Google Assistant and Alexa. Uh, the other benefit to this TV is you also have smart things built in. And you guys, if you haven't seen my three months Galaxy Note 10 video, go ahead and check that out. And you see how smart things integrates here with the television set. It's very simple, easy, fluid. Remote control is probably one of the best remotes on the market. Very few buttons, very intuitive to use. Doesn't look like a hot mess what the LG has. I'm sorry, LG, that remote is old and it needs to go. Now let's go to picture quality. This is something that's very interesting. I, I went back and forth and you know, Daniel's here and he looked at some of the images himself. And I would say when it comes to picture quality, especially in a controlled environment, say you're watching at night, both TVs handle really well. Now we know how OLEDs do well in blacks and the Samsung also does pretty well as well here. We're looking at Avengers Infinity War. If you haven't seen the movie, sorry, spoilers. You're gonna see some spoilers here. Actually, that's not Infinity War. I lied. It's actually Endgame. So yes, if you haven't seen Endgame, I'm really sorry. In terms of viewing, I think both TVs look really similar in image quality. When you're watching movies, very close, very similar. I do give a slight punchy edge if you like that uh, to the Samsung, especially when you're watching things with high, um, high, uh, con oh, sorry, high HDR uh, nits. So. Things like, you know, of course, your comic book movies uh, that go really bright, 2000 nits and things like that. Yeah, sure. I think the Samsung does a little bit better job there, but the OLED is really good. So I'll say in terms of picture quality, to me, they're almost the same. When it comes to gaming, which is something we like to do on here, uh, I think LG has stepped up. Both of them automatically, both TVs automatically go into game mode. The LG looks really nice and crisp. You've got G-Sync, so if you connect to your PC, it actually works with that. Uh, and you've got that 120 hertz uh, refresh rate. Uh, really good, fast, responsive, playing Call of Duty, that was in the Xbox, look really nice, that was World War II. Same thing with the, um, the Samsung. The Samsung looks really nice and vibrant. I think, you know, it, uh, it's, it's not as contrasty as the LG. Uh, and again, it has its game mode, goes in automatically as well. 120 hertz refresh rate, really nice. Both do a good job. I give the slight edge to the Samsung just because I think the colors have a much more balanced tone to it in gaming. A response time feels just a little bit smoother for me, but I'm really impressed with how LG has really improved from you know, the last couple of years uh, with their gaming. Now, the one thing I actually showcase uh, here in this video is also visibility during uh, daytime. And this is where the OLED baffled me because uh, when sunlight is coming in, you're watching the TV, uh, it's very reflective and you can see all around my apartment. You can't really see the image in front of you. If you're watching, uh, doesn't matter the angle, if you're watching an off angle where the you know, sun is behind you, you can see more of the TV, but not as much. Now with the uh, Samsung, it is less so with the Q900. And that's something that I find really important, especially if you're watching TV in the daytime. This also goes to the fact that the Samsung has a higher nit rate as well. So it goes higher than 600, which is what the LG is usually at. Uh, and that helps, especially when you're watching in daytime and you've got that dynamic mode, which you shouldn't be watching anything at all, really, unless you're outdoors or there's a lot of sun coming into your apartment. So you're asking the question, which TV should I get? Now, I'm gonna go back to something that I think that sets them apart is 8K. I'm not pushing to say this is the best 8K TV. What I like about the Samsung over the LG OLED, and I realized this when I switched between both TVs, especially watching Star Trek Next Generation. I was kind of just binging it for a while because it's one of the Star Trek shows that I haven't actually fully watched um, all the way recently. I think the last time I watched it fully was years back. Is with the 8K content, with, with watching it on 8K on the Galaxy, it just looked much better the upscaling really did a much better job as opposed to what LG has 
with its you know AI engine on the uh, E9. Also noting with the Samsung 8K TV is that, as I mentioned, all your content is upscaled. So if it's connected via HDMI or playing through an app on the TV itself, the TV automatically upscales the content to 8K. So it doesn't matter where the source is, HDMI or built in, it's gonna upscale it. And you see the upscale difference uh, is more noticeable when you're going to lower resolutions. So if it is 1080p, 720 or 480. If it's 4K, it's a little bit more minimal. Uh, so it's just something to take note. Now, the E9 looks good, but I could see the stark difference. And it wasn't me watching 4K content or 1080p content. It was me watching something like that. I mean, 1080p, it was also a little bit noticeable, but 720p, I could really see it. And the fact that there are many shows that I love that do that is something that's quite impressive to see what Samsung can do. And that's why I give it the edge. Plus the pricing is very similar. And I think Samsung still does a much better job with gaming in game mode. Now, with the Samsung TV, you do need to get a soundbar. Uh, the Q90 soundbar is absolutely ridiculous. It, it sounds so rich, huge bass. Uh, the subwoofer really kills you. You really need to turn it down. But that's kind of like an advantage and disadvantage where you've got a good soundbar, but it's a disadvantage because you do have to buy the soundbar to complete the experience, if you will. But my pick here between these two is the Samsung Q900R. Now, if you have any questions, any comments, or you think the LG E9 is better, let me know. But I think for the things I stated where if you look at uh, Samsung with its image in terms of uh, gaming and also daytime viewing, the OS and how clean and simple it is to use the remote control, to intuitive nature there, I think that just makes it a much better experience. And of course, to top it all off, 8K upscaling, uh, I think is really, really solid. So if you have any questions or any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment. One more, one more thing to add.